I am Joseph M. Sanchez, the youngest member of the Professional Native Indian Artists Incorporated, also known as the Native Group of Seven in Canada. As an artist and curator and currently chief curator of the Museum of Aboriginal Arts and Artifacts, I welcome you to the only place in the world where you can visit the whole group in a permanent exhibition of paintings and prints. The first piece of work I'd like to talk about is called The Prophets. It is a triptych that is an acrylic and Conte on paper. This is a series of three images painted in my Santa Fe studio on Easter Sunday of 2013. Collected by Moapa for the opening of the new gallery on the PNIAI, the native group of seven. The Christian prophet is a representation of organized religion, be it Christianity, Islam, Jewish, or Buddhist, an image of serenity, prayer, and a cross of suffering as a shadow. The Indian prophet is native thought, the connection to the natural world, communication with animals and all that lives and shares our Mother Earth, and is represented by a transformation into a red-tailed hawk. The New Age prophet, Stone Brothers, the sacred Paha, Sapa, the Black Hills, reflects on the laws of nature as opposed to the laws of man. The belief that man is charged with dominion over all that lives and can do whatever he wants with the earth and all that lives on this planet has led us to an ecological crisis. We all share this earth and man does not have the right to destroy it. The Ghost Dance Religion is a series of painting and prints from late 1980 to early 1982 where I reflected on a book given to me by Norval Morisot in 1974 by James Mooney. It took me many years to digest this rage into a work of spirit. Approximately 70 works were created, today many lost or destroyed. But in the collection here there are three works, the original acrylic and ink on paper, and two pieces from the seven Professional Native Indian Arts Incorporated Exhibition organized by the McKinsey Gallery in Regina and curated by Michelle Lavallee. They are Ghost Shirt and La Finiquera, which is a monotype on paper. In the Smithsonian 66 slide program with general, genuine artifacts preserved from the battle, two maps and a detailed booklet for grades 9 through 12, its introduction states, at Wounded Knee, the cult of the ghost dance religion, which some Indians had thought would oust the white man from the West, met its gruesome test in December of 1890. Aroused in anger at a shameful reservation system, the Sioux gathered at the Pine Ridge Agency. Members of the 7th Cavalry, Custer's Old Regiment, confronted them, filled perhaps with thoughts of revenge for Little Bighorn 14 years earlier. When the gun smoke cleared in the South Dakota battlefield, a whole chapter of America's history had closed. This massacre of mostly women and children and the mass burial at Wounded Knee are a constant reminder of the genocide of Native people in the Americas. In another statement from the report from the Commissioner of Indian Affairs in 1891, Volume 1, pages 132 to 135. The Messiah craze, which fostered the belief that ghost shirts would be invulnerable to bullets and that the supremacy of the Indian race was assured, added to discontent and the fervor of fanaticism and brought those who accepted the new faith into an attitude of sullen defiance, but defensive rather than aggressive. Undoubtedly, ghost shirt is the first concept drawing for this whole series. It is an ink drawing and acrylic wash on paper. It features a jet airplane, which I use to signify its contemporary time. Ghost Shirt is a stone lithograph, an addition of 50. This is in number 24, printed at Southwest Graphics in Scottsdale, Arizona. The print was begun on December 17, 1980 and completed on January 24, 1981. 
and printed by senior printer Kim Baker with the assistance of Tamara and master printer Joy Permal Baker. I wrote about this print in 1981. In the days of the ghost dance, Indian people of all tribes were joined together, and I wished to be returned to the old ways by the Savior. In Ghost Shirt, I remember that wish as something of the present. The shirt itself as a symbol of the spirit of Indian people, and its sunset colors awaiting the evening star. The Savior is ultimately our own spirit and strength of our Indian ways, and is as, as elusive as the night sky. The shirt is from an image of a real ghost shirt. The silhouette is filled with the evening sky in a cave form, representing the earth, which is the vault of our histories, our magic, and our people. The invulnerability of the ghost shirt is represented in this print as the spirit of the Indian people in modern society. Bullets do not have the capability of killing the memories and legends of people so culturally entwined with the earth. Within the print are multiple images relating to different tribes, masks of the West Coast, false faces of the Iroquois, the love medicine of the Cree, Manitokans of the Minoan, and the pottery of the Southwest. They are living memories of a culture rich in magic and mystery. It is this heritage Indian people strive to protect from the coal trucks of Black Mesa, the developers and the grave diggers who have no respect for our Mother Earth and our ancestors who are rest in her ravaged bosom. The monotype La Finiquera is from an image of an Arapaho ghost dancer with a medicine bundle in his hand. In this version, I chose to print in tones of gray to black, painting an image of Phoenix, Arizona skyline and an airplane taking off from its airport downtown. It also has a silver prismacolor outline on the silhouette of the dancer and a saguaro cactus in the sunset. The images of lust, death, and Christianity and the eyes watching you are representations of the plagues facing the urban native Indian today. The tie is the earliest piece in the collection, and probably done in the winter of 1973. It is an oil pastel on poster paper and as me in my youthful surrealistic whimsy with the hand pressing down on a feather and an arrowhead bolo tie. Knife in the Heart is a dramatic Conte drawing on gray pastel paper. Done as a representation of sculptures on pedestals. It represents a scream of pain as a knife penetrates the breast of Mother Earth and disrespect of the sacred feminine. Birth of Angels is another Conte on gray pastel paper from 1976 and of my favorite subject for many decades, angels. They are born from soft, amorphous forms with white highlights, drawing on toned paper with black with white highlights. It comes from copying old master sketches from my four volume set of the greatest drawings of all times that I used in my early days studying drawing. Ancestors in the Sky is a watercolor and ink painting on watercolor paper from 2016. This small work is the first piece of my work purchased by Moapa. A work about our ancestors watching over us as clouds, wind, and other natural wonders, be it rainbows or lightning bolts. Surreal Landscape is another watercolor and ink on paper from my traveling sketchbooks. This one is from 2011. Clouds Over the Mountain, also from the 2011 sketchbook, features images of faces and animals swirling over a mountain landscape. During my residency at Portage College in 2019, I was able to create many, many pieces. Some were started here in my studio in Santa Fe, and the remainders were either started and all finished at the studio at Portage College. First, I have Transformation, which is an 8 foot 3 inch by 41 inch work on paper, an acrylic on Conte. This is a story of the water spirit and transformation into the sacred feminine. Into the Light features figures rising into the light. Spiritual renewal in this acrylic and Conte work on paper 
It is 74 inches by 41 inches. I think I see a fox. A funny title for this piece. This is acrylic and Conte on paper, 60 inches by 41 inches, and sees death disguised as a fox while the souls of man roll and tumble on an earthly plane. Fancy Dancer remembers the prayers of a fancy dancer as he spins feathers blurred and spirals of color in a heavenly setting. 52 by 41 inches, this is also an acrylic and Conte on paper. Spirit is 81 by 41 inches. An acrylic and Conte on the end of a paper roll, creating the banner look. This spontaneous work was created in about 15 minutes. Is the energy of the spirit in a visitation in my studio in Santa Fe. The color was deepened later in the studio at Portage College. The Lovers features two figures in an embrace, angelic, sensual. This too is an acrylic and Conte on paper and is 74 inches tall and 41 inches wide. The Prophet Conte and acrylic on paper is 74 inches by 41 inches. Sacred fire reveals the head of a prophet in its smoke and movement. Ancestors Talking is a 48 by 41 inch acrylic on Conte and paper. A small figure with a skull head in a mountain landscape. An angry head with a yay figure below it. Bird figures with angry tongues and a sky above an empty landscape. The warnings are real and our future is uncertain. Lake of the Deer is the demonstration drawing on paper. I did it at the Bold Center drawing workshop. This is a three meter plus piece where I was sharing my energetic drawing technique and the quickness of image making without the tightness of a totally controlled line, but letting the flow of the movement overtake the consciousness holding you back. Spirits of the Boreal Forest is a large work on 300 pound watercolor paper painted at Portage College in the studio classroom during my residency in 2018. The drawing of eight minutes was filmed live, then the color was added over several weeks. Drawing upon the energy of my recent experiences in the sweat lodge and time in the boreal forest at Coal Lake, I let the energy of this unique environment on earth take hold of my imagination, creating two spirits rising around a full moon spirit with the land on fire in memory of the Fort McMurray incident and the burning of our beautiful mother. The masterwork of this residency is a piece named by the student viewers Seventh Generation Baby and is the largest of the works, 60 inches wide and 13 feet long on 300 pound watercolor paper. The small figure of a baby in a cradle board kept reappearing in this composition, hence the name. A vision of figures in animal forms, fish and birds interact with faces that look on and at you. What are we doing? What are we leaving behind? What is the future of our seventh generation?